talking about the things that matter most to you, Catholic Women Now. Welcome to Catholic Women Now. I'm Julie Nelson. Chris is on sabbatical. Hey, I'm delighted to be with you, and thanks for inviting me into your morning today. And I want to wish everybody a holy, blessed Holy Thursday as we enter the Tritium. This evening is the Mass of the Lord's Supper, and I want to invite anybody who's been away for a while to come back. This is a great time to come back to Mass and back to the church. And all of us, let's welcome all the new people back and strangers back into our church this, this uh, Tritium and Easter Sunday. Uh, today, my guest who will be joining me is Barbara Heil. She's a woman filled with uh, the Holy Spirit and just a beautiful message. And we're going to talk about this uh, Holy Thursday, the Gospel of John that's being that'll be read tonight that you'll hear at Mass tonight. We're going to break that open, and she's going to help us to enter into the Passion with aligning our hearts and our minds, just kind of renewing them, putting the world aside and focusing in on Jesus and coming closer to Christ and, and accompanying him. But first, let's entrust this half hour to the Immaculate Heart of Mary. So I'd like you to join you in praying with me. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit to thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. All right, we've got a great announcement here at Iowa Catholic Radio. Iowa Catholic Radio 15th Anniversary Footprints of God Pilgrimage to the Holy Land with Steve Ray, Matt Wilkham, and Father P.J. McManus. So mark your calendars, everybody. It's going to be November 11th through the 23rd of the year 2023, so you have some time to plan, save up, and sign up. And ladies, we're getting back together again at the Iowa Catholic Radio Ladies Luncheon. Yay, it will be good to see each other, share, catch up, share faith, fun, and fellowship. It's going to be Thursday, April 21st, 12 noon at St. Augustine's Parish in Des Moines, Iowa. The speaker for our luncheon this month will be Kelly Walquist. She's the founder of Wine, Women in the New Evangelization. She'll present her talk message of mercy. And what many people may not realize is Kelly Walquist used to work at the Shrine of Divine Mercy in Mass and look at it in <clears throat> Stockholm, Massachusetts, excuse me. And speaking of mercy, did you know the Divine Mercy Novena begins tomorrow on Good Friday? I know we've got a lot of things going on with the Tritium, but I just thought this was important, especially as we enter into um, Holy Thursday tonight, Jesus asked St. Faustina that the Feast of the Divine Mercy, which we know is the Sunday after Easter, be preceded by a novena to the Divine Mercy. Novena is nine days of praying the rosary every day, and uh, they are devotions for each day for the Divine Mercy. You can find online if you do a search. Jesus gave St. Faustina intention for each day, with the last day being the most difficult intention of all, and that is the lukewarm and indifferent souls. And this is what Jesus said about this, Um, and I quote from St. Faustina's diary. These souls caused me more suffering than any others. It was from such souls that my soul felt the most revulsion in the Garden of Olives. It was on their account that I said, My Father, if it is possible, let this cup pass me by. The last hope of salvation for them is to flee to my mercy." Okay, that I don't know about you listeners, but that just kind of sent a chill down my spine and struck an uh, arrow to my heart. Uh, um, mercy is such an incredible gift from God. So I hope I invite you all to join me as I, I'm going to do this as well, the, the Domvina to the Divine Mercy, which begins tomorrow. Okay, well, it's my pleasure here at Catholic Women Now to introduce our guest, my guest today, uh, Barbara Heil. She's a Catholic evangelist, speaker, and missionary who's traveled to over 60 countries, a convert to the Catholic faith, and she's married to Jeff. And now, Barbara, welcome to Catholic Women Now. Thank you. I'm delighted to be here. I have to say, you have worn many hats over the years, but now you have a new hat that is to, new to you, is that being a farm wife and farm life. Farm wife and farm life. That is that is so true. <laughs> I, it's been a little while now. I think we just had our eighth anniversary, but yep. Well, I think you're you're adjusting marvelously with the with the farm life. I've been out there to your farm and you're just very welcoming and hospitable. And of course, you know, I have a love for the farm from my background too. So 
Yes, us farm girls have yes, to stick together. We do. There is a kindred spirit there. So, Barbara, t- we are going to talk a little bit about Holy Thursday. So, I'm just going to let you go ahead and get started and, and lead us here. Well, I just, as uh, I was preparing to be here, I was thinking about Holy Thursday. And actually, for me, Holy Thursday is one of the most significant days on the calendar in my life. And I have to say, early on when I started reading Catholic material, because I wasn't Catholic, those of you who who don't know me, I am a convert. I was a Protestant minister for years and years. And it all started with reading a book that was written by St. Teresa of Avila. And I went into this journey with the early church fathers. Well, the person that gave me that book, his name was Bill Wilner, and he had left the ministry we were at, and he comes back, and I was invited to go with Bill and Cheryl. This was back in, I'm going to say 2001, so mm. a while ago. Yeah, yeah that is a while and ago. And they invited me. They, it was Thursday night. Easter was coming up, or what we called Resurrection Day was coming up. And they said, we're going to church tonight. Do you want to go with us to St. Anne's? And I said, really? What What are you doing at church on a Thursday night? Well, lo and behold, it's Holy Thursday. I end up at St. Anne's with them, and I ended up having an amazing experience. And since then, since that time, and then coming into the Catholic Church, um, so much happened on Holy Thursday. It is packed. I was reading the gospel this morning and meditating on it from John that they'll be reading tonight at, at Mass. And there's so many things that jumped out at it's, me. There's so much. And one of my favorite things, I mean, just just the fact they're they're celebrating Passover. So the, the whole can, I mean, you could spend a week just discussing Passover, the significance of the Eucharist, the Passover meal, Pesach, all of that. Um, everything down to the crushed grapes of the wine and the crushed wheat of the bread, the significance of all of it, the shared cup, everything. And of course, we celebrate that. And a lot of us don't know exactly what we're celebrating when we're celebrating the Eucharist. We know it's Jesus, but we don't get the full tapestry of what it's all, all the imagery that's yes. in it. It's but So read the book of John. I encourage people to read the events that happen in Holy Thursday, it's John 13 all the way to John 17 and 18. All of that happened this day. So packed. You know, and I was reading it, and the one thought that came to me was like, this is the culmination of those three years he spent with his disciples and what was going through their minds like, oh, yeah, I remember he said that last year. Now, what's this mean now? And they're right. sensing something big is about to happen. And I kind of, I look at that and I'm kind of like, would I... I'm kind of like, I would sense that, but would I want to look at it? What is going to happen? There would be this. Well, and when they were preparing for the Passover, it, they really, to them, it was just a normal, another normal Passover. They had done this before with Jesus. Right. Yeah. This wasn't the first time. So the significance of it, and then the part where Jesus washes their feet. I, yeah, I yeah. want to delve more into that washing of the feet because there is so much significance and so much depth to that, that uh, that I think that we could really uncover and uh, discover and help others to come into that more deeply, too. So you, uh, I'm Julie Nelson, and um, my guest today is Barbara Heil here in the studio. You're listening to, listening to Catholic Women Now, broadcasting from the Iowa Catholic Radio Network studio. This is a segment about small Catholic innovations that made a huge impact from the OSV Institute for Catholic Innovation. Back when water was difficult to purify, beer was actually the standard drink because the fermentation process killed harmful bacteria. But it wasn't all that tasty and didn't last very long. This is where Catholics upped the ante with two major contributions. The first came from monasteries, where monks needed heartier beers to get them through long periods of fasting. So they experimented with flavorings and techniques to make it more robust. The second contribution came from St. Hildegard von Bingen, She's the first person credited with using hops in beer to preserve it. And it didn't hurt that hops added great flavors, too. Mm. So you can thank Catholic Innovation for beer. Learn more about what OSV Institute is doing to inspire and encourage Catholic innovation at osvinstitute.com. 
Support for Iowa Catholic Radio is provided by CTO. What great news for donors to the Catholic Tuition Organization. You now receive 75%, yes, 75% of your donation back in Iowa tax credits beginning January 1st of this year. Your support has helped thousands of students attend our Catholic schools. Best gift ever. Online, ctoiowa.org. At CTO, the bottom line, it's for the kids and their future. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by Mercy College of Health Sciences, where you can chart your course for more. Mercy College provides unparalleled clinical rotations, hands-on learning, accelerated education, and flexible schedules. Since 1899, Mercy College has been transforming students into healthcare professionals. Guided by Catholic values, our faculty put classroom theory into practice. Students are prepared for roles in service and leadership throughout their own careers. Learn more at mchs.edu. Mercy College of Health Sciences. mchs.edu. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now. I'm Julie Nelson, and I'm speaking today with Barbara Heil, uh, a, a great friend of Catholic Women Now. She's been on the show many times. And we're talking about Holy Thursday, and uh, we were just scratching the surface, Barbara, before we, we had to take the break. And I, we're going to want to go into some things like I the whole idea of Monday Thursday. I don't think a lot of people, I know I didn't for a long time, understand what that meant. It's called Holy Thursday in much of the world is called Maundy Thursday. And sometimes we just accept these names. Maybe you've never heard that as a, as an, an Iowan uh, in middle America, but it's a common name for this day. Maundy Thursday is, comes to the Latin root for the word mandate. And what it literally means is mandate. Thursday. What does that mean? And what does it have to do with Christ? Because literally after he washes the disciples' feet, after he tells them, this is my body, this is my blood, do this in remembrance of me, after all of this, and, and really the significance of the washing of the feet, he tells them a new commandment I give to you, that you will love one another with the same love that I have loved you with. This isn't a suggestion. This is the mandate of Christianity. This is the call of Christianity. And we know, oh, you know, love is nothing new. We love our friends. We love our relatives. Uh, we, you it kind of gets overused a little it bit. It gets overused. We get really casual about it. But he was saying love the same way. And after washing the disciples' feet, which is the job of a slave, which is something when you went into somebody's house, if you had wealth, if you had a slave, they washed your feet. If you didn't have a slave, you washed your own feet. It was considered the lowest job. It wasn't a luxury. It was a necessity. Everybody needed their feet washed. Everybody had dirty feet yeah. in that culture at that time in that part of the world. And when he, when he takes the bowl and he takes the towel and the scripture is so beautiful because the way it says it, it says Jesus, knowing where he came from and knowing where he was going, takes the bowl and the towel. In other words, he was going to take the role of a slave because he was absolutely assured of his identity. He was a servant. He was a servant. He came to serve. He came to serve, but he was willing to serve because he knew there was honor in this serving. He wasn't afraid to serve them. And so when he goes to wash the disciples' feet, their response and their reaction, it, we have to understand this would be like, you know, the person you admire the most doing the most degrading thing. And that would humiliate you. You'd be humbled that they, they weren't just humbling themselves. You're the cause of them doing this, this act of great humility, we don't like that. And Peter didn't. No. He said, oh, you're not going to wash my feet. Exactly. And that's why they reacted so strongly. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were appalled that, they would do, that he would lower himself to do that, but that he would do that to them. Mm -hmm. What's it going to look like? What are other people going to think? Uh, you know, just all the ramifications of this. And Jesus embracing that role of servanthood. And then from that place is where he tells his disciples, now you're going to love one another the same way that I have loved you. And I remember asking the Lord, you know, Lord, love is overused. The word, we just so casual about it. We hear that phrase, love one another. We're like, yeah, 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 mm -hmm. next. Yeah, and yeah, see it on a plaque. We buy it and put it up. And exactly. <laughs> and it, it goes right with 1 John 3.16 interestingly written by the beloved disciple yes, John. Yes. And it says in 1 John 3, 16, 
By this we know what love is, that we would lay down our lives for one another the same way he laid down his life for us. And so when you start to really unpack the Jesus-looking cross-like, heaven-looking love, it's this true self-donating, this true self-giving. Not, it's not an emotion. It's not a feeling. It is the decision an to act. an act and a decision of self-emptying for the good of another that can't repay me, that can't benefit me That's... in any way. Comes without expectation. Exactly. You know, when um, what struck me about Peter refusing to be washed, have his feet washed, is when Jesus um, addressed that with him, it was Jesus's love and humility for Peter that washed over Peter and healed him, and he he had a change of heart. Yes. In that act of service of love and humility of Jesus, and I think about that for us, right? When we can bring that act of love and humility to somebody else, just that simple gesture, how much healing it can bring to somebody. Transformative. Yes. Transformative. Yes. And that was really what struck me about that that part of that washing of the feet. And we're afraid to be too serving. Yes. There's a part of us that's afraid to be too humble. We're afraid to put ourselves out there too much because we don't understand the power of this self-emptying. We don't understand the transformative power of loving somebody truly and deeply, even if they're a stranger, even if there's somebody that hurt me or harmed me uh-huh. or someone that I live with every single day and I tend to take for granted, you know, to live in that way where the, where everywhere and in the whole world, everybody's my brother and to be willing to give of myself, not just to tip God, you know what I mean mm-hmm, when I say mm-hmm. tip God, but to truly live in this way. And we don't know what that looks like yet. We don't. And we kind of get into a false humility about that, too. And that's what I think Peter was kind of experiencing, too, is a, a false humility. Oh, no, no, I'm not worthy. But No, he was shocked. He was shocked. He yeah. was shocked. You're not going to do this for me because this is too much. Mm-hmm. The, Jesus, I've been with you. I've walked with you. I've heard you. I've been, I'm, a, I'm, your, serv- I'm your servant, Lord, but this is too much. So the question that is this coming from all this is, whose feet am I to wash? Jesus modeled that for me right. in discipleship, and as it's his disciple, he's asking me, whose feet, who's my brother or my sister that I'm called to wash? Exactly. Which is very powerful when you think about that. And the feet are the lowliest part of the body, right? And it might not be the person that you perceive as your brother or sister. That's right. It That's might be important. the person that you don't perceive as your brother or sister that doesn't seem qualified or worthy of your attention or to be even valued. Uh, one of the things humanity craves for is to be valued. Everybody around you has that need. And we're going around with blinders on, you trying know, to get to the next true. service, trying that's... to get to my next duty, trying to get to the next thing on my list of things to do, that I'm not even seeing the opportunity around me. Amen. Amen. Well, this is Julie Nelson. I'm visiting with Barbara Heil about uh, the Last Supper of Gospel reading tonight from John. This is Catholic Women Now, broadcasting from the Iowa Catholic Radio Network studio. Has anyone ever told you to pray about it and left you thinking, okay, but how? First, invite the Holy Spirit to be with you as you talk to God. Think about what is going on in your heart and mind. Be honest. Acknowledge to God what you're thinking, feeling, and desiring, because He wants you, the real you. Then, tell Him about what you're experiencing and entrust that to Him. Finally, let the Father love us. Ask yourself, how is God loving me right now? He is loving always. Sometimes we need to stop and think of our blessings, because that is where we can find God. This Easter holiday, see the movie based on the inspiring true story. Figured it out. I'm going to be a priest. For Halloween. A father stew. No one wants to hear the gospel from the mouth of a gangster. Academy Award nominee Mark Wahlberg. Maybe that's exactly what they need. And Academy Award winner Mel Gibson. Men don't lose when he gets knocked down, but when he won't get up. God ain't giving up on you. Don't you dare go giving up on yourself. When a man comes around. Father Stew, exclusively in movie theaters April 13. Rated R, under 17, not admitted without parent. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio and Catholic Women Now provided in part by Permar Security, providing security solutions for homes and businesses since 1953. Permar Security is a Catholic-owned family business supplying security systems, access control systems, video surveillance, fire alarm systems, and video doorbells. All alarm systems are monitored out of their monitoring center located in the state of Iowa. Permar Security 
515-244-5660, permarsecurity.com. Support for Iowa Catholic Radio provided by the Knights of Columbus, Foreman and Pfeiffer Agencies, specializing in life insurance, long-term care insurance, disability income insurance, and retirement annuities. Are you looking for a career? We are in search of men with an entrepreneurial spirit and a strong desire to live Catholic values. Knights of Columbus is seeking field agents to serve throughout the state of Iowa. Visit kofc.org slash careers. The Knights of Columbus need you now, and one day you might need the Knights. That's kofc.org slash careers to learn more. Welcome back to Catholic Women Now. I'm Julie Nelson, and I've been speaking with, we've been having a wonderful chat with Barbara Heil here about the passion, uh, the, the, the washing of the feet and the Last Supper. And so this last segment, Barbara, you kind of alluded in the first segment a little bit about how you have a story centered around Holy Thursday in your own life and your conversion to Catholicism. So I'm sure, let's share more of that with our listeners. Well, I was saying that when I wasn't even a Catholic yet, I had just read my first Catholic book. This is way back in 2001. And Bill and Cheryl came back to our ministry and they invited me to go to St. Anne's. And um, I was like, first of all, I was stunned that I was allowed to. <laughs> and, and it was really the first what time. What did I, you think we were like, Barbara? Well, I didn't know. And I, and I, it, also, I would say this was probably the first time anybody had ever invited me to anything at a Catholic anything. Make note of that, people. Yeah, yeah you the power of an invitation. And um, I got there. I don't remember anything about the service except that I was shocked. It was all scripture. I had read these as a practice for myself. I had read uh, John 13, 14, 15, 16, and 17 as a practice during that time leading up to Easter. And so I was so familiar with those scriptures. And I challenge you, uh, listeners, and uh, go ahead and read the scriptures and read the scriptural account of what takes place on this day. Especially on, John 13 through 17. Yes, John 13 through 17. And um, anyway, so I am there with them and they're going through the scriptures, and it was a beautiful evening. And then at the end of the night, uh, we had ridden, driven separately, and they said, we'll see you tomorrow. I said, well, aren't you going back with me? Because they live very near to me. And they said, no, we're staying late to, to stay with Jesus for a while. And I was like, I want to stay. I didn't even know what I was saying. <laughs> you heard I, with Jesus, right? <laughs> I, I just heard it was Jesus. They were staying with Jesus, and, and I want to stay. And so we went into this back room, and it was pretty full. And and people, it was very quiet and meditative, and Cheryl whispered in my ear, um, you know, where Je- this was the night Jesus was arrested. We're just praying and being with him. You know, in, in this case at St. Anne's, they were meditating on him being in prison. And so I was all over that. I'm like, oh, I want to do that. And I began to pray. And when I opened my eyes, the only people left were Cheryl, Bill, and myself. And an hour had gone by. Wow. And she said, there's going to be somebody coming soon that, to do another hour. And I said, I'm going to stay. And when I stayed, there was something in that church. There was something that happened that made that so present to me. I had been to Israel many times, and I'd been to the pit. And those of you who've been to the Holy Land will remember going to the pit where Jesus was kept the night he was captured, the night he was uh, mm-hmm. taken by the guards. Um, the night Peter denied him, that he even knew him, Jesus ends up in what we call the pit. This is where he was imprisoned that first night. It has so much significance to it. The pit was once a container for food. Uh, it was, It was. yes, it was a container for food that had been converted into a prison. So here's the bread of life in this pit, the first night of his, his imprisonment. He's already been beaten Mm. He's already had his beard plucked. He's he'd he'd earlier been in the Garden of Gethsemane, um, bleeding droplets of blood from the wrestling match he was in with his flesh with the with the human Jesus, and in that pit that you can actually see a shadow, and they don't know why it's there in this pit where Jesus wow. was kept. There's a shadow on the wall of a man, and it's a man that's fallen against the wall, and I have prayed there many, many times. But while I was in this church in St. Anne's, it was like I was there with Jesus, that man that had been in that pit, and a drop of his blood fell on me and on my foot. 
as I'm la- I'm there weeping with him in this prison, and for wow. months I would feel that, and it made me wonder what is in that church mm. that that is so real and so present. And it was really a part of me awakening. It wasn't just that book. Mm -hmm. of St. Teresa of Avila. It was that experience on Holy Thursday of being with Jesus in the pit, in the, in that prison and, and just experiencing that in that Catholic church that made me wonder why did that happen at that Catholic church? It sent you on this journey, right? Yes. And I, and and I want to encourage people today on this Holy Thursday, um, ask the Lord, who can I love better? Who can I love the way you love? where I don't get anything out of loving them. Mm -hmm. How can I love better? How can I be your hands and feet? And Lord, let me accompany you tonight in a real way that I can be with you in your aloneness in choosing the will of the Father. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Very beautiful. Barbara, thank you so much for making the drive here today to join me here in the studio. And uh, listeners, let's let's all go into this tritium renewed and refreshed and committed to follow Christ. Let's conclude with a prayer. Join me in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, continue to bathe me with your words so that I may be found clean. Grant me the humility and charity to imitate your virtues. I wish to learn to wash the feet of others, so give me the grace to let down my defenses and simply reach out to do good without worrying how others may react to me. Amen. In the, name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Iowa Catholic Radio welcomes Scotty Mercury with special guest Allie Colleen to the Iowa Events Center Ballroom Sunday, July 24th. You can get tickets and information at celebratecountry.org. This is Catholic Women Now broadcasting from the Iowa Catholic Radio Network studio. Thank you so much for joining me today. We appreciate your financial support. Donations always welcome at iowacatholicradio.com. Faith on Trial with Deacon Mike Mano and Gina Knoll is up next. And remember, God loves you and has an amazing plan for your life. Today's Catholic Women on The Voice for Catholic Women Now, Iowa Catholic Radio. Catholic Radio.